All this happened in a second. We don't know how it happened or why it happened, but suddenly it was completely ruined. And it's made me think of my friend whose wife had a terrible accident, no one knows why or how, and she was gone, all in a second. We all asked, why did it happen? How did it happen? Some people asked, why didn't God intervene? She was a Christian. I just want to talk to you about the way God protects his people. The first person who realized that Jesus was the promised one, the son of God, the very being of God, the one who created the whole universe, the first person who realized that was the apostle Peter. And when he told Jesus, I know who you are, Jesus congratulated him. But then Jesus went on to speak about his death, almost in the same conversation. Yes, I am the one you talked about, the one the whole world has been waiting for, but I am going to Jerusalem where I'll suffer and die. And Peter said, you can't do that, not God's son. That's not the way this story ends. And Jesus said to Peter, go away from me, get behind me. Satan, you are speaking the words of the devil. The other disciples had a similar problem. They began to realize that Jesus was the promised one. And then they began to speculate what benefits they would have because they were his earthly followers, his lieutenants, when he comes in his glory. And so James and John start talking about sitting on thrones, one on the left and one on the right. They've got in their mind all this earthly glory, which uh, powerful people have in this world. But this was not the way of Jesus. When Jesus was suffering on the cross, it was no pretend thing. He was really suffering. And he called out to his Father in heaven, give me a hand, help me. And nothing happened. And so in an awful voice, he called out, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? But in actual fact, there was no other way. Jesus said the greatest thing in the world was love, that God was love, and implicit in all of this is there's no easy answers, and there's no super protection. Those who follow him, and even himself, would have to walk the road of love and of suffering, and there was no avoiding it. And after the disciples had met their risen Lord, then what? No talk of crowns or thrones. They were hounded. They were chased from their synagogues. They were chased from their homes. They became like the refugees in our day and worse. And their fate, instead of being in some palace, was very often in an arena where they had to face the animals for the entertainment of the Romans. They were not protected in any way at all, but still they believed Jesus is the one. Around the world, most people have religious beliefs because they believe their religious beliefs will help them. Uh, the bottom line is my religious beliefs will bring me good luck or save me from disaster or protect my children or give me a better place in the next world. Jesus did not promise his followers protection. In fact, we can see in Christian history and in the New Testament itself, the opposite happened. Because they followed Jesus, they suffered. He didn't promise them 
that they would be always in good health. He did not promise them that their business would be profitable. He did not promise them status. In fact, he said, the prostitute and the prisoner will have the same status as you. And what's more, a little child will have more status than any of you. Jesus invites his followers to walk with him and to walk with him on the road of love with no special privileges and forgiveness to those who hurt you. And why do this? Because only this love can heal the world. Only this love can bring new life. Think about the future. We have many problems in the world. Do you think they're going to be solved by the rich getting richer? By a few people having wonderful health care and many people having poor health care or none at all? Do you think it will be solved by an elite who somehow control all the rest? No, Jesus said the hope of healing the world one at a time is the hope of love and forgiveness, not of privilege or protection, but just feeling the pain and keep on loving and keep on working at bringing justice and sharing. The notion that love alone can heal the world and heal our small world is out there. Many people have known it for thousands of years. Jesus brings it into tight focus. I really like this quote from Rabindranath Tagore, the famous Indian philosopher. He says, the same stream of life that runs through the world runs through my veins night and day. We are all connected. The love of God connects us. The love of God asks us to participate in the healing of the world, starting with the healing of our little circle of life, but going beyond us. This is a road of service. It is also a road of suffering where we will not be protected and we will not be favored but we walk with those who commit themselves to each other and to the wider world and to serving. And for me, it's serving in the name of Christ and in the spirit of Christ. God bless you.